Today we're talking about this new NAFTA agreement, also known as the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement, USMCA. Which, good luck getting Usmaka to catch on. I'll just refer to this as new NAFTA because, hey, I'm the guy who's probably going to end up saying it more than 50 times before this report's over. Today I'm going to focus on what was changed and how this was all negotiated, because seeing this as a successful resolution could lead to a better understanding of how some of these other trade wars are going to play out. So without further ado, brand new deal to terminate and replace NAFTA and the NAFTA trade agreements with an incredible new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement called USMCA. It sort of just works. The name's actually a pretty perfect metaphor for this deal. Everything is slightly changed and just a little more complicated. Before I go on, just kind of setting the tone of this episode, it seems like this treaty is better for America than the previous NAFTA deal. So, well, okay, that's great. The basic complaint seems to be how similar this is to NAFTA, but considering this is coming from the same people who wanted to stay in the NAFTA deal a few months ago, well that's probably not going to be a big problem. I mean, it's really similar, but it's the difference between watching something in HD and watching it in enhanced 4K plasma whatever the latest technology is. Basically, the details are a little sharper, better, and all seem to benefit us. Take for example Canadian Dairy, something that sounds about as politically influential as a tell-all book by Lincoln Chafee. Turns out it was a huge sticking point. This ultimatum over a NAFTA deal, Donald Trump telling Canada that our country has got until Friday to sign on to a new deal between the U.S. and Mexico. Of course, at the heart of this, the auto sector, lumber, but also dairy, the protections that the Canadian dairy industry gets. That has been a big issue for Donald Trump. Turns out Canada really loves their dairy industry and were milking it for all it was worth. And they fought to protect it to the point where it was a major sticking point in new negotiations. And of course it was. I mean, when I think of free trade, I don't think of a quota system for imports where above a certain volume it imposed dairy tariffs ranging from 200 to 313 percent. That more than doubles the price of foreign competitors. Now this had been tolerated from presidents since the 90s. But you guessed it. One of the hearts, really, of this new trade deal and one of the biggest concessions for Canada is in the dairy industry, Ottawa, giving uh, U.S. farmers greater access to the marketplace in Canada. And Canadians are so angry that they said thanks instead of thank you when they were handed a copy of the treaty. It's being reported that the United States won expanded access to Canadian markets for U.S. dairy producers. And the Canadians? Well, they want a key concession from the U.S. negotiators that preserved a dispute resolution process. Hey, they achieved the status quo. And let's be honest, they also won. This whole damn thing finally ended. A year of talking about dairy tariffs? I mean, I've been stuck in some boring conversations in my life, but a year-long debate about that? Whew, I'd probably say yes to anything and beg for the pleasant alternative of waterboarding. Maybe getting someone who would credibly wreck the whole world economy to negotiate details of a trade deal might not have been the worst idea on record. Or, after saying that out loud, maybe that was still a terrible idea and we just lucked out that we were dealing with our allies. So it's just all of these little sacrifices to maintain the status quo, mostly in dairy, cars, dispute resolution, and because nothing can be agreed upon without some sort of benefit to them banks, pharmaceutical companies, and unions. So we've already talked about dairy. U.S. farmers will now have access to Canadian dairy and Canadians will have access to ours. And Mexico, if you want to get in on that, elect someone crazier. Now let's get to cars. Is it as good for the auto companies and auto parts companies as the market is making it out to be today? Well, sure it is. You know, when all is said and done, uh, more was said than was done here. Not not a lot is going to change, to be honest with you. I mean, if, if the whole idea here was shh, our uh, top story, to shut right? off... Imp yeah, shh. Don't make it seem like we wasted a whole year on this thing and I wasted two days writing it. As some of you may remember in August, we came to a trade agreement with Mexico and left Canada as the kids sitting alone at the lunch table looking to be included. It's still surprising to me that Trump took stock of our neighbors and thought, 
Yeah, let's start with Mexico. They love me down there. This portion of the tri-party agreement was largely just ported over from that early August United States-Mexico agreement. But that agreement really was cool. And yes, I just said cool about a trade deal because I am just that nerdy. But it tried something new that I'm actually pretty excited about. Tariff-free vehicles now have a new restriction. 40% of the car must come from a so-called high-wage factory that pays a minimum of $16 an hour in average salaries for production workers. Hey, at least we're fighting for minimum wages somewhere. So now only 60% of the car will be made in Mexico. This will lead to a win-win situation though, because that's about triple the average wage of a Mexican factory worker right now. So what they've tried to do in this deal is sort of force wages up by fiat, saying you know more of the content in cars has to be made by high-wage uh, workers. Mexican labor standards have to be tougher in order to allow unions to organize. Some effort to really go after a problem that, interestingly, Democrats and the labor left have been complaining about for years. Whole part of Trump's campaign to make Mexico great again. This should make American factories more competitive and in theory bring jobs back. Although $16 an hour, I'm not sure that's going to cause much of a stir in American automotive manufacturing. It also changes one other NAFTA policy that was probably agreed to in about 30 seconds. You know how cars are a Frankenstein monster of parts made from different countries? The engine came from Detroit, the mirror is from Mexico City, and the GPS? Well, that's from a country where it's acceptable to make a U-turn on an eight-lane freeway. Well, the old agreement said that 62.5% of the car had to be made in America, Canada, or Mexico to qualify for zero tariffs. And this new agreement just rounds that number out to a much nicer 75%. Now, no ampayers are rising or falling because of this tweak, but it's one of the major things that changed. Lastly, and this may be obvious, but in this climate, who knows? Remember, the Canadian view is that the very notion that Canadian cars and car parts could pose a national security threat to the United States is frankly absurd. Yeah, remember that time, oh my god, it was just a month ago when we threatened tariffs on Canadian cars? Well, as a part of this deal, Canada and Mexico got letters exempting them from any future tariffs the US will put on foreign countries for car imports. And if anyone stands by a signed agreement, it's Donald Trump. One of the last major things it did, and this is actually pretty huge despite its lack of attention. The question is a very simple question. How do you have a drug manufactured by a company, manufactured in the same factory, put in the same bottles, sold in Canada, in some cases for one-tenth the price that that same medicine is sold in the United States of America? Well, that's a major problem. And the solution? A provision to extend the intellectual property protections of American pharmaceutical companies selling prescription drugs in Canada. Now this will extend the period of protection for American made pharmaceutical drugs in Canada for buy similar competitors. Because free trade. Pharmaceuticals are already silently celebrating while trying not to draw any attention to this. Because with this elimination of competition. Most analysts are anticipating this will significantly grow profits from our neighbors to the north. Because, well, with their great healthcare system combined with our unbeatably high prices, the Canadian government might start subsidizing a fair amount of these costs. Specifically, pharmaceutical companies will also get exclusive marketing rights on biologic drugs for 10 years. Now a quick lightning round of other things that have changed. American financial services companies have better access to Canadian and Mexican markets. Basically, you can't treat an American financial institution differently than a local financial institution. Which, believe me, I could go into more detail on. But it's long, detailed, and didn't change that much, beyond the fact that you can't treat them differently. No duties on digital content which should save the one person who hasn't figured out how to torrent things yet a ton of money. But look out, because this is the first agreement to mandate civil and criminal penalties for satellite and cable signal theft. That is so specific. 
Lastly, hey Canada, America's sending you a bunch of dairy. Would you like some wine with that cheese? It forces grocery stores in British Columbia to stop their practice of selling British Columbia only wines on certain shelves and stock American wines along with them. So congratulations to all Napa Valley Trump supporters. Man, that Venn diagram is just two circles. Anyways, as I said at the top, this thing doesn't really have any radical changes, but just a ton of really small details, all of them which benefit America. So, and I'm scared to say this, don't scroll down to the comments, but good job United States Trade Representative Lighthizer. Hey, I'm working on an episode about you and China right now. Let's see if you can keep up this winning streak. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan comedy news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the right of my head. Or do it the old fashioned way by clicking the subscribe button below. Click that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and remember to give me a thumbs up. And as always, thank you for watching.